Okay, so welcome to this little tutorial right here. This is a beginner's guide to Z-Spheres in ZBrush. Z-Spheres are a very good tool to, say, build up a base mesh to then sculpt high-res detail on in ZBrush. It's, it, it has other uses as well in ZBrush, but it's what it's one of the more common uses for it, and if you're new, that's what you're probably going to use it for. So this here is a Z-Sphere, uh, which is a very nice and spherical looking. doesn't do much right now because it's lonely. It wants friends. If you take your cursor over it, if we increase our brush size, uh, you can see our, this is our cursor. You can see that when we put it over the Z-Sphere, we get this little preview type thing on it. So if you go in with our draw tool, or draw right here, which you can get to by pressing Q on your keyboard or pressing the icon right up here, we can press anywhere on the Z-Sphere, you see our icon changes, and we can press and hold. This allows us to create a Z-Sphere on top of it, connected to the first one that we clicked on. And when we created it, we get interactive scaling, like when we to get it just the right size we want. So now we have it. Now we have connected to that, you can see it's connected as uh, to told by this little tube-like thing right here. And that looks very nice, we now have it too connected, it looks like a little, I don't know, pill or something like that. But we can also use the uh, transform tools, we can which you can use obviously in sculpting as well, but you can use those in Z-Spheres also as well. So you can go into, say, the move tool right here by pressing either W on your keyboard or pressing the little icon right here. And with this you can do just what you might, you know, what you think you can. You can indeed move the Z-Spheres around, you can move this around with it, you can move it down to the sides and to all directions. In fact, it's very, very advanced like that. And uh, yes, we can do everything like that. We can move it, we can go in with our scale tool or our E button on our keyboard, and we can scale it up way big. And we can rotate it if we really want to, but I'm not going to do that right now because it really doesn't matter. You can see it rotates a bit, it doesn't actually show up because our base isn't really built the way to show how it moves. But not only this, you can also go in. Say we want to add some arms, say if this is a weird alien, we want to add arms, right? You can only add add Z-spheres, like create another Z-sphere on top of other Z-spheres. You can only do that, as I said, on top of Z-spheres. You can't do it on top of this little tube block thing. So to actually make them, say sticking out right here, you have to make another Z-sphere inside of this tube. And to do that, we go into our draw, draw tool, or the Q button again, and we just click where we want to split it, and this splits it for us. Now, so you see now it made another Z-sphere inside of this tube. Or, well, it split it in half and then made it right there. So with this, we can go with the Create tool, and we can in fact make an arm right here. So we can make an arm, and we can pull it out, and say this is our arm. But you can see now we only have one arm, we would have to redo it on the other side. You can see that we can also use stuff like, since we can use the Transform tools, we can use other tools native to the sculpting portion of ZBrush inside of Z-spheres. So we can go into, say, the transform tool, and we can activate symmetry. And this will actually work while doing, because it's, it's still using brush tools here. So we can activate symmetry in our transform menu right here. Activate symmetry, let's say X symmetry. And this is otherwise activated by pressing the X key on your keyboard. And now when we draw, oops, if we select the draw tool first. When, now when we draw, we actually make two, oops, we actually make two of these. Like equally on the same size or on different size, and they will be exactly the same. And uh, you know, this doesn't quite look like also. If we go into our create tools, we can create some here, and we can go into our scale with E, and we can scale it down and scale it down. Maybe go into our move tool with W and move it up a bit, move this one up a bit. And you know, it, it doesn't exactly look like ours. It actually, in fact, looks quite crappy, but you know, maybe you want something like this for some reason. And let's say this is your final Z sphere mesh. And you like to make this into poly mesh 3D so that you can look out on it. First of all, maybe you want to see how it looks first. Also, maybe you want to spot if there are any issues with the Z spheres that I can fix before making it final polygon mesh. So to do this, you can press A on your keyboard. This will preview the model as an adaptive skin. Basically, adaptive skin. If you don't know what that is, it's it's basically just previews it as a polygon mesh. It, it does a lot of other things too. Adaptive skin is kind of interesting, but it's something I won't go into right now. But yes, it's basically a polygon mesh as you can see right here. Adaptive skin is find, found under the tool menu right here, which I have docked on the right side, which is the default on ZBrush. And it's right here. Pressing the A button, as you can see, uh, toggles preview here on and off. It does basically the same thing as just pressing this button right here, but it's more, it's easier to do because it's a button on your keyboard. And you have the density slider in the preview option, which it does what you think it does. It controls how many polygons, basically how many how many divisions your uh, preview model here has. So you can go up and make it really smooth, or you can go down and make it more low poly, which you can do right here. So let's say we have good density, let's say we can do something like yeah, density 3, sounds good, right? So now, let's say we're happy with this, right? 
so we have it perfectly perfect, and uh, now we want to make it a pole mesh 3D. So to do this, we use adaptive skin as well. So you press make adaptive skin. So this will do this for you. Now in your tool menu right here, you can see all your different tools right here. Now you have something that's called CSR Z Sphere Project right here, was called Z Sphere 4. Our adaptive skin is going to be called skin underscore Z Sphere 4. So you press that, and now we have this. This is your Z adaptive skin of Z Sphere. Now this is not actually a, a polymesh 3D, so you can't do a lot of super fancy things with it. But you can do right here. You can press Make Polymesh 3D too with it, and pressing that will make another one and select it, which will be the polymesh 3D. The naming conventions can get out of hand. We can rename them in the option right here. So yes, you now have the polymesh 3D. Now we can go into the geometry. You can divide this as many times as you want. Go in with the brush tool if you really want to, and let's see, we'll go in with the standard, right, oops, sorry about that, not that. But we can go in and we can do some stuff on this, we can scale it as a brush up, and we can do fancy stuff like this, and very, very happily so. So that, now we have our final polygon mesh for 3 here. So that was this tutorial, hope it helped, and thank you for watching. If you liked the video, do give it a rate. If you did, do in fact like my videos, do subscribe. If you don't, don't, and if you don't like the video, dislike it. And I'd like comments as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope it helped.